Okay. Welcome back, guys. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back. So now in this class, we'll be starting with the central nervous system pathology. Okay, we'll be dealing with the central nervous system pathology. And this today's class, in this today's class, we'll be mainly dealing with the basic introductory things. Also, we'll be discussing about the demyelinating disorders, also the neurodegenerative disorders. Also, we'll see some congenital anomalies. Okay. Having said that, without any further delay, let's begin our topic. Okay. So, look here. The nervous system. Nervous system. Uh, just let me take my pen. Yeah. Okay. So, nervous system is having which types of cells? See, there are neurons in the nervous system. The neurons, you know the cells, right? The neurons which are involved in like you know, conduction of the electrical impulses, the neurons are there. And also supporting these neurons, there are glial cells. The glial cells are there. Glial cells are the supporting cells. And neurons, they are the functional units. Okay. Now, important questions are, so what are the types of neuroglia? Okay. The glial cells, neuroglial cells, they are supporting cells. What are the types of neuroglia? Okay, the basic things, basic things. So, there are ependymal cells, okay, oligodendrocytes, satellite cells, astrocytes, microglia and strong cells. So, there are different types of glial cells. Now, for your exams, what they will ask you is, sir, what exactly are these ependymal cells? Kya hai? What exactly are these ependymal cells? Sir? Ependymal cells, okay, ependymal cells, let me write here. Ependymal cells, they are the lining cells. They are the lining cells of what? Of ventricles. They are the lining cells of the ventricles. Now, in our brain, there are spaces, right? The paraseoles are there, diaseoles, myoseoles, like, you know, the spaces are there where CSF is present. Now, those spaces are lined by which type of cells? Our blood vessels are lined by endothelium. In the same way, the CSF filled spaces, especially the ventricles in the brain and the <coughs> spinal canal in the uh, spinal cord, okay, the central canal of the spinal cord are lined by these ependymal cells. Sir, what are these oligodendroglial cells? Sir, oligodendroglial cells, they will cause myelination. Myelination of central nervous system. Then what are these astrocytes? Uh, sorry. Then what are the Schwann cells? The next cells are Schwann cells. This one, the last one. Okay, the Schwann cells. So what exactly are the Schwann cells? They are also myelinating cells. They are also myelinating cells but of peripheral nervous system. Okay, sir. Then what are these microglia? Okay, the microglial cells. See, the microglial cells are the macrophages. Okay, they are the macrophages in central nervous system. Okay, they are the macrophages. In the nervous system, this microglia, the microglia are acting as macrophages. They are the phagocytic cells. Okay, done. Now, what else you should know? The glial cells are neurectodermal in origin. They are all derived from which germ layer? Neurectoderm. Okay, neurectoderm. Okay, so central nervous system is derived from the neurectoderm. Okay, glial cells are also derived from the neurectoderm. But which glial cells are derived from the mesoderm? Which glial cell? It's the microglial cell. Just you think logically, use your brain. Microglia, they are nothing but macrophages. What are macrophages, sir? Macrophages are nothing but monocytes. Monocytes. In the brain, now once the monocytes enter into the brain, they, they now they become the macrophages. So where these mac these monocytes are originated, the monocytes are originated in the bone marrow. Okay, they are the blood cells. The macrophages are nothing but the blood cells. So blood is mesodermal in origin. So mesenchymal, sorry, uh, mesodermal. Okay. So microglial cells are the macrophages in the brain. <coughs> they are mesodermal in origin. But all other are neurectodermal in origin. Okay, so after this, what else I should teach you? See the macrophages in the brain. Look, the macrophages in the brain. Yes, they are microglial cells, sir. Now, in which condition you will see elongated microglia? The elongated microglia are seen in which conditions? Okay, elongated microglia. The microglia got elongated. Now, they are also called as rod cells. Seen in a condition called as neurosyphilis is the question asked. In neurosyphilis, what you will see? Elongated microglial cells called as the rod cells. Okay, now, then what are these jitter cells? Okay, jitter cells, see in the central nervous system, these macrophages, these macrophages are eating the myelin. The macrophages are eating the myelin. Okay, 
Now, see, the microglial cells, the phagocytic cells, they are consuming the myelin. So, these cells are called as jitter cells or hortiga cells. Okay, jitter cells or hortiga cells. Now, what are they? They are lipophages. Why lipo? Why? Because myelin is nothing but the lipid. Okay, simple. In urosyphilis, rod cells are seen. Rod cells are elongated macrophages. What are jitter cells? Jitter cells are lipophages or the macrophages which are eating the myelin. Okay, basic things completed. Next. Sir, as we are discussing about the microglia, microglia, the mesodermal origin, okay, heart tega cells, rod cells, neurosyphilis, okay, okay. Now, sir, in which condition you will see microglial nodules? The microglial nodules are seen in which condition? HIV. The microglial nodules are seen in HIV. Okay. Now, in certain conditions, the neurons will be degenerated and the macrophages will come and eat the neurons. Okay, like removing the debris, the neurons are getting totally cleared away. Okay, the neurons was degenerated, now the leftover pieces are get, like, you know, get, getting removed. So, this is called as a neuro, means neuron, phagia means eating. So, neurophagia, it is seen in which condition? Neurophagia is seen in polio. Okay, neurophagia is seen in polio. Polio is because of polio virus. Once polio virus enters into your body, it causes the neurodegeneration, especially in the ventral horns of the spinal cord. Okay. So, the neurons are getting degenerated, that those degenerating neurons will be phagocytosed. So, neurophagia is seen in polio because of polio virus. How will you get the polio virus? How will you get the polio virus? How one can get the polio virus? Sexually. Sexually transmitted route. No, it's a fecal oral route. Okay, contaminated food and water. Okay. So, in polio, one important point which I want you to know is the alpha motor neurons in the ventral horn will be affected. The alpha motor neurons are affected. So, if you ask me, what exactly are these alpha motor neurons? Uh, let me show you. See, imagine this is the spinal cord. Just for those students who doesn't know, just let me make a small diagram. This is the spinal cord. Now, in the spinal cord, you know this central, that butterfly shaped region, right? The central butterfly shaped region. So, the central butterfly shaped region is called as what? This is the gray matter. This is the white matter. This is also white matter. This is also white matter. They are all white matter. The central region, which I am highlighting. See, the central region, the head-shaped region, this region is called as gray matter. Now, this gray matter, it is divided into how many parts? The gray matter, it is divided into, look, this dorsal horns and ventral horns. See, this pink color is the ventral horn. That green color is the dorsal horn. Now, the polio virus, once it enters into your body, the polio virus enters into your body, the polio virus will come and sit here. The polio virus will come. It will sit here and causes the damage and causes the damage to the ventral horns. That's the question which was asked many times. So, the ventral horns of the spinal cord are damaged. So, do you know what is the function of ventral horns? Ventral horns function is motor. Motor function. So, motor functions are going to be affected. The motor neurons are dead. So, motor neurons, whenever they are dead, that will cause paralysis. Okay, paralysis. Okay. So, done, sir. Now, next. Sir, what are red neurons? Okay, red neurons kya hai? So, these are all the basic things. We haven't entered into the topic of congenital anomalies. We haven't started the neurodegenerative disorders or the demyelinating disorders. First, I'm, start, I'm going with the basics. Okay, sir, kya hai, sir? What exactly are the red neurons? See, these are the neurons. Okay, see, after hypoxia, okay, 12 to 24 hours of hypoxia, now the patient is having hypoxia. So less oxygen is going, less oxygen is going. So, 12 to 24 hours of the hypoxia, okay, the neurons, now they are dead. Okay, so what you are seeing here is these are the dead neurons, eosinophilic neurons, they are dead with the loss of nucleus. So, red neurons are a result of hypoxia. Okay, neurons will first, the first, the most sensitive cell in our body for hypoxia is neurons. Within 3 to 5 minutes, they will die. Within 3 to 5 minutes, they, they will die. But on the biopsy, on the biopsy, okay, if you take the biopsy, uh, like in the first 12 hours, in the first 12 to 24 hours, you can see these red neurons. Okay, the pinkish eosinophilic cytoplasm will be seen without any nucleus. So, these are the red neurons. Okay, red neurons are seen during, um, like, you know, the death, the death of the neurons due to hypoxia. Death. Now, after this, what else I should teach you? The astrocytes. Okay, astrocytes. Sir. What are the important points about the astrocytes? Astrocytes are the abundant cells out of all the glial cells. Okay, out of all the glial cells, astrocytes are the abundant cells. Okay, astrocytes are the abundant cells. What they form? They form the blood-brain barrier. Okay, they forms blood-brain barrier. Everyone knows it. Astrocytes forms a blood-brain barrier. 
Okay, so you you see here. See this is the blood vessel. Here is the blood vessel. See there is the astrocyte. Astro means like a star. It's having a star-like projection. So it controls. It controls the entry of substances into the central nervous system. Which substances should enter? Which substances should not enter? Like it's like a wall. It's like a wall. Okay, it's like a barrier. Okay, it doesn't allow any toxic substances to enter into the central nervous system. So it's acting as a blood-brain barrier. Okay. See uh, these astrocytes. They will also have a role in wound healing and injury. Okay, they also have a role in wound healing and injury. This is the MCQ. Okay. Which cells are going to help in wound healing? Okay. So, wound healing and injury. Whenever there is injury, wound healing, the astrocytes are going to help you. Next, after this, Rosenthal fibers. What are the important points about the Rosenthal fibers? But, sir, what exactly are these Rosenthal fibers? Okay. Let me tell you. See, these Rosenthal fibers are elongated, warm like bundles. Okay, they are elongated, warm-like bundles. Whenever you see Rosenthal fibers, okay, in the astrocytes, okay, in the those cells which are forming the blood-brain barrier, what they are suggesting, these Rosenthal fibers are suggesting there is a damage, see, pathognomic of astrocyte pathology, there is some damage that's happening, okay. So, Rosenthal fibers are elongated, eosinophilic, warm-like bundles, okay. So, these things whatever you are seeing here these are all rosenthal fibers they are pathognomic of they are seen in which condition they are seen in a condition where the astrocytes are getting damaged sir if you ask me what exactly are these rosenthal fibers sir sir what is the composition the composition of the rosenthal fibers is intermediate filaments okay intermediate filaments so the intermediate filaments in the astrocytes the intermediate filaments in the astrocytes okay so, intermediate filaments in the astrocytes forms this Rosenthal fibers. Simple question. Rosenthal fibers indicates astrocyte damage, astrocyte injury, astrocyte injury. What is the composition? The composition is glial intermediary filaments, heat shock protein 27, ubiquitin. So, this is the MCQ which was asked in the exam. Okay. So, the Rosenthal fibers are made up of, the Rosenthal fibers are made up of glial intermediate filaments, heat shock protein, heat shock protein 27 and ubiquitin. Okay. Now, this Rosenthal fibers, where, in which conditions they are seen, sir? In which conditions they are seen? In which conditions? Wherever there is astrocyte-related injury. Wherever there is astrocyte-related injury, there you will see the Rosenthal fibers. So, in which conditions? Seen in gliosis or JPAC. Sir, what is JPAC? Okay. Junile uh, pleocytic astrocytoma. See, in the name itself, it is there. Astrocytoma. Junile pleocytic astrocytoma. Junile Pilocytic astrocytoma. Okay. So, astrocytomas. In astrocytomas, see astrocyte related injury. Our astrocyte tumor, it's a tumor, sir. It's a tumor, it's a, a tumor in the central nervous system. So, general astrocytic, uh, like general pleocytic astrocytoma, you are going to have Rosenthal fibers. Okay. You also see it's a looking like a, it's a warm like, it's a warm like elongated eosinophilic thing. Okay. Made up of heat shock protein 27, ubiquitin, and glial intermediary filaments. Okay. Now, after this, carboramylase is uh, not needed, not that important. Now, sir, in Alzheimer's disease, dekho, what are the important points which you should know? Sir, every, every student knows Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is what? Neurodegenerative disorder where the patient is going to have dementia, dementia thing. So, that's a disease, sir. Okay, that's a disease, Alzheimer's disease. But there are cells called as Alzheimer's cells. It have nothing to do, it have nothing to do with the Alzheimer's disease. What are these Alzheimer's cells, sir? See, Alzheimer's cells are nothing but astrocytes. Okay, they are nothing but astrocytes. There are type 1 Alzheimer's cells and type 2 Alzheimer's cells. Type 1 and type 2 Alzheimer's cells. See, they are seen in which conditions? Alzheimer's cell type 1, they are seen in, okay, PMLE, okay, which is because of JC virus. Okay, JC virus. Now, Alzheimer's type 2, is because of, sorry, it's seen in which condition? Alzheimer's type 2 cells are seen in encephalopathies. Okay, encephalopathy. Because of hepatic encephalopathy or because of some other reason. So, hepatic encephalopathy or Wilson disease. You know, what is Wilson disease? Wilson disease is accumulation of copper. The copper is getting accumulated. So, what they will ask in your exam, especially for FMG exam and APG exam, what they will ask you is, Alzheimer's cell type 1, it is seen with which virus? JC virus. Okay. 
next alzheimer's type 2 it is seen in which condition encephalopathy wilson's disease okay wilson's disease okay next now if you want to know what is pmle it is called as progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy here also there the encephalopathy okay progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy because of the jc virus so alzheimer's type 1 is seen in pmle alzheimer's type 2 is seen in wilson's disease encephalopathy okay next you know myelination of the neurons in the central nervous system is done by oligodendrocytes in the peripheral nervous system is done by schwann cells you know it the basic thing i have already explained you in the beginning okay next sir in pathology what else what else we should know in the basics sir so what is the stain for the myelin see there is a myelin right myelin around the neurons which is giving the insulation which okay which is giving the insulation so this is what is the stain for the myelin it's a luxal fast okay luxal fast is the stain for the myelin okay so optic now just tell me optic now sir optic now it's a second cranial nerve right it's a second cranial nerve so we know cranial nerves all cranial nerves are peripheral nerves cranial nerves are coming under peripheral nervous system cranial nerves are coming under peripheral nervous system but see optic nerve yes it's a second cranial nerve it's cranial nerve means it's coming under peripheral nervous system who is the one myelinating the peripheral nervous system swan cells but what is the exception sir optic nerve though it is a peripheral nerve okay optic nerve the second cranial nerve though it is a peripheral nerve it is lined by oligodendrocytes it is lined by oligodendrocytes so that's the reason why in demyelinating disorders of the central nervous system in the demyelinating disorders of the central nervous system there will be visual abnormalities because the demyelination is also happening in the optic nerve okay, in the optic nerve sir next so have we discussed about the ependymal cells have we discussed about the ependymal cells yes we have discussed so we, this is the central canal of the spinal cord in the spinal cord is the central canal so what are the lining cells so these lining cells are called as ependymal cells so who is going to be there in the central canal csf csf okay now the cells which do not regenerate with the injury this is the question which was also asked so this ependymal cells do not regenerate mcq ependymal cells do not regenerate do not regenerate okay next what else what else see in measles condition there is a condition called as measles because of the measles virus which is seen in the children okay the rash is going to happen in the body because of the measles virus okay see in the measles this measles virus do you know what it will do it will affect it will cause a damage which cells oligodendrocytes oligodendrocytes are going to be affected and the oligodendrocytes are affected definitely there is going to be demyelination proper myelination is not going to happen so that's going to cause a condition called as subacute sclerosing pan encephalitis now questions subacute sclerosing pan encephalitis there is a demyelination why demyelination oligodendrocytes are going to be damaged because of which virus measles virus so measles will affect central nervous system measles virus will it affect central nervous system yes so measles can cause subacute sclerosing pan encephalitis mcq mcq okay so measles affects which cells microglial cells astrocytes ependymal cells swan cells oligodendrocytes they affect oligodendrocytes okay next what else sir sir in which condition there will be ground glass oligodendrocytes that are seen okay see in which condition ground glass oligodendrocytes have we discussed about this have we discussed about this progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy pmle because of jc virus okay jc virus sir in which condition sir uh, see, that is seen in poly, uh, progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy see the ground glass oligodendrocytes the ground glass oligodendrocytes are seen in pmle progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy because of the jc virus now why it's because this ground glass appearance okay this is the oligodendrocyte the ground glass appearance is because of this virus okay so viral inclusions are present due to the presence of this viral inclusions it's going to the cell the uh, oligodendrocyte is going to look like a ground glass you know the ground glass right okay you just check how the ground glass looks like in the internet so the ground glass appearance okay not exactly transparent but translucent in the uh, in the bathrooms like the glass is going to be there right that not transparent but translucent glass okay so that's the ground glass appearance so with this the basics are completed okay the basics are done
Now, after discussing the basics, now let us discuss about the congenital anomalies. Okay, now congenital anomalies. The first congenital anomaly that I am going to discuss here, they go here. So, this is the baby. What is not there, sir, here? The skull vault. The skull vault is not there. Okay, the skull vault, the cranium is not developed. Why the cranium is not developed? Because you should know that actually there is something called as a neural tube. Okay, when you are an embryo, okay, when the baby, like you know, the embryo, okay, small baby, first 20 days, okay, now you are having the structure which is called as this neural tube. See, from this neural tube, the entire central nervous system is going to develop. That is brain and spinal cord. The entire brain and spinal cord are going to derive from this neural tube. See, there is this anterior neural pore and the posterior neural pore. Okay, there is anterior neural pore and posterior neural pore. Actually, this is an anterior neural pore, it should close, it should close. You see, imagine this is a neural tube. The anterior neural pore should close and the posterior neural pore should also close. Okay, both of them should close. What happens if the anterior neural pore is not closed? Not closed. Okay, so anterior neural pore not closed closed. Usually when it will close, it will close by day 23 after fertilization. After fertilization, fertilization have happened, sperm, ovum, they have done their party, like you know, now there is an embryo, there is neural tube. Now on the day 23, it have to close. Okay. But if it is not closing, that causes a condition called as anencephaly. Anencephaly means, anencephaly means the skull vault, the cranium is not formed. Definitely the baby is not going to survive. Okay, it's not compatible with life. So, he's going to have a little on the frog-like faces. Okay, the frog-like faces, the cranium is absent. Done. Now, the posterior neural pore should also be closed. Now, it will usually close by day 27. Okay, day 27. If it is not closed, if it is not closed, then it will cause a condition which is called as a spina bifida. So, spina bifida, okay, so there is a spina bifida where you can see the meninges, sometimes nerves will come into this cavity. Okay. So the spina bifida, they go, how the, it's looking like. Okay. Now, spina bifida is due to defect in the closure of posterior neural pore. Erencephaly is due to a defect in the closure of anterior neural pore. Now, if you ask me, sir, why? Why the hell the anterior neural pore and posterior neural pore are not closing? Why they are not closing? See, they are not closing because of deficiency of vitamin b9 okay folic acid deficiency folic acid is a precursor for dnas folic acid is a precursor for dnas if there is no folic acid no amount of proper folic acid the cell division will not occur sir the cell division the baby is continuously growing right so how the anterior neural pore will close by cell division how the posterior neural pore will close by cell division even that there is a deficiency of vitamin b9 so proper cell division will not occur. So, the anterior neural pore and posterior neural pore will not close. That will cause erencephaly and spina bifida. Okay. So, the spina bifida patient is going to have meningomyelocele. Okay. The spinal cord contents and the meninges will come into this cavity. Meningomyelocele. That is called as a meningomyelocele. Okay. Now, in one of the exam, it was asked, see, there is a baby with erencephaly. Anterior neural pore not closed. Mother is having vitamin B9 deficiency. Okay, everything is okay. When this baby is delivered, when this baby is delivered, what is the presentation? Normally, when the baby is getting delivered, which part will come first? That is a vertex. The head is going to be totally flexed, something like this. The baby, okay, the head will come first out of the birth canal. It is a vertex that is going to come first. But here, there is no vertex, there is no skull. Now, what is the most common presentation in a baby who is having anencephaly? The most common presentation is going to be face presentation. Okay, the most common presentation during delivery, the most common presentation during delivery, the first the face will come, why? Because there is no skull. So, face presentation. Okay, that is the question which I want you to know. Okay, antenatal folate deficiencies will cause this. Next. Next. So, what you are seeing here, this is a baby. Okay, this is a baby. What you can see in this image that I am showing you, okay, what you can see here, do you find any abnormality, see, in this area, now it is totally black, it is totally the fluid filled space, now it is a totally fluid filled space, now why it is totally black here, 
this is the place where cerebellum was supposed to be this is the place where normal cerebellum was supposed to be there is no cerebellum absence of cerebellum the very important mcq especially for the board exams okay uh, like the usmle kind of exams is very important this condition is called as dandy walker malformation congenital anomaly dandy walker malformation the absence of cerebellum cerebellum nahi hai not there okay it's not there yeah okay after this next what else sir so here in this MRI, what you can see here is, see this cerebellum, this is the cerebellum, right? Now this cerebellum, it is getting herniated down into the spinal cord, onto the spinal cord. Normally here will be the foramen magnum, okay, through the foramen magnum, the spinal cord will come down. Okay, the, the middle oblongata continues as spinal cord. Now what is happening is, see the cerebellar peduncles, these are called as the cerebellar peduncles, now they are getting herniated, there is herniation of cerebellum. This condition, it is called as Arnold Kearney uh, sorry, Arnold Kearney malformation. Okay, so Arnold Kerry malformation, malformation. So what exactly is Arnold Kerry malformation? Herniation of cerebellar peduncles. Herniation of cerebellar peduncles. Okay, let me show you one more uh, image here itself. See, they go. Now, here what you are saying in these images. See, here there is a cavity in the spinal cord. Are you able to appreciate a cavity? In the spinal cord, there is a cavity present. Here also, in this image also, this is the normal spinal cord. Okay, the normal spinal cord, normal spinal cord. Of course, there is a little, like, you know, herniation, cerebellar herniation is there, okay. Now, when you follow the spinal cord, see, spinal cord, normal, normal, normal. But in the spinal cord, again, see here, you can see a cavity. Okay, fluid-filled cavity is there. The black color cavity is there. Okay, now, let me, yeah, now you can see. So, this is a cavity. So, what is this condition? This condition is called as syringomyelia. Okay, now the patient is having what? Syringomyelia. Now, why I am discussing about this syringomyelia? Because usually this case, uh, syringomyelia, syrinx means cavity. Syringomyelia, it is associated with what? It is associated with Arnold Kerry malformation. Arnold Kerry malformation is associated with syringomyelia. Okay, Dandy Walker malformation, uh, syringomyelia. These are repeatedly asked image based questions. That's why I kept it here. Okay, done. Now, in tomorrow's class that I will be discussing about epidural hemorrhage, subdural hemorrhages, that I will discuss in tomorrow's class. Now, directly, let's jump into the topic of neurodegenerative disorders. Okay, neurodegenerative disorders, we'll discuss now. Okay, now, which neurodegenerative disorders do you know? Okay, which neurodegenerative disorders do you know? Alzheimer's disease. Okay, Alzheimer's disease. Parkinsonism, where there is a degeneration of the neurons, the neurons are getting degenerated. When the neurons are getting degenerated, what happens? What happens to the size of the brain? The size of the brain decreases. Okay. Now, can you tell me when, just, okay, well, I will discuss everything about the Alzheimer's disease, in and out of the Alzheimer's disease, I will discuss. What is the main problem with Alzheimer's disease? What is the main problem? Alzheimer's is the most common cause of dementia. The most common cause of the dementia is Alzheimer's disease. What is dementia? Memory loss, neurodegeneration, memory loss. How memory loss will occur? Why memory loss will occur? We'll discuss now, one by one, okay? See, sir, Alzheimer's, we have discussed, that's the leading cause of dementia, okay? But why Alzheimer's disease, sir? Why? Why it is happening? Usually, Alzheimer's is seen somewhere around 60, 70, 80 years, right? If you are, you are getting older and older, Alzheimer's will come. Why Alzheimer's? Because of mutations. Mutation, which genes? The most important genes are going to be mutated. ABB gene, okay, APB gene mutation, not APC. APC is a different gene, okay. So, that is uh, going to, the APC gene mutations are going to be seen in familial endomatous polyposis, colorectal cancer, in the GAT. So, this is APB gene mutation. APB gene, which is present on the chromosome number 21, is mutated. Presenilin 1, presenilin 2, presenilin 1 present on the chromosome number 14, presenilin 2 present on the chromosome number 1. So on. And if you can remember, remember this also, apolipoprotein E gene mutation. Okay, so these are the gene mutations which are seen in Alzheimer's disease. Four gene mutations. APP gene mutation on 21, presenilin 1, 14, presenilin 2, chromosome number 1, and apolipoprotein E gene mutation. These are the mutations. So now here you can very clearly see here this is a healthy brain. Okay, here there is a neurodegeneration because of that the brain is becoming smaller. Now what you can appreciate here is so they go normally in normal brain. What is this? This is a gyri and a sulci. Gyri, sulci, gyri, sulci. Gyri and sulci are there. But in severe Alzheimer's disease, they go here. In severe Alzheimer's disease, there is a wide, okay, a wide sulci are there. The gyri are becoming smaller, the, thin, the thinning of the gyri and the sulci, the gaps are becoming wider. 
Okay. So, if they, if they say on autopsy, what we have observed is there is a thinning of gyre and widening of the sulci. You can say this is a neurodegenerative disorder. Okay. That's Alzheimer's disease. Now, okay, sir. Because of this gene mutations, okay, gene mutations are there. Because of these gene mutations, why the neurons are dying? Why the neurons are getting degenerated? Okay. See, let me tell you, in your home, okay, in your home, you are supposed to be there. In your bedroom, you are supposed to be there, not the some other person, not the some other guy, right? In the same way, in the brain also, normal protein, normal structural protein, normal functional protein should be there. If there is some abnormal protein that's getting deposited over there, collapse, total collapse. Okay, so that brain will start to go like, you know, the inflammatory changes, like, you know, the neurons will die. Okay. So, what happens because of these mutations is abnormal proteins, formation of abnormal proteins. Where? Where this abnormal protein, sir? In the neurons or outside the neurons? Both in the neurons and outside the neurons. Both within the neuron and outside the neuron, some abnormal proteins are going to be deposited. So, what are they, sir? See, intracellular means within the neurons. So, within the neurons, they are going to be the neurofibrillary tangles. So, the neurofibrillary tangles are going to be there within the neurons. Now, if you ask me, sir, what are these neurofibrillary tangles? Like, yeah, sir, what exactly are these neurofibrillary tangles? So, the neurofibrillary tangles are nothing but hyperphosphorylated, the hyperphosphorylated tau proteins. Normally within the neuron, okay, normally within the neuron, tau proteins are present. But if that tau protein, if it is hyperphosphorylated, then it becomes a particle called as the neurofibrillary tangle. I will show the image also. So, neurofibrillary tangles are nothing but the hyperphosphorylated tau proteins. Tau proteins are normally there. If it undergoes hyperphosphorylated, then it becomes neurofibrillary tangle. Now, outside the neurons, what you see? Extracellularly, there is also deposition of some abnormal protein which is called as amyloid. Simple. A beta amyloid, the ab like you know, the abnormal protein is getting deposited. That is called as a neuritic plaques. So, neurofibrillary tangles are present and neuritic plaques are present. Neurofibrillary tangles are within the neurons and neuritic plaques are outside the neurons, both intracellular and extracellular problems. So, neurons are going to be undergoing degeneration okay, because of this abnormal proteins. Okay. So, let me show you. See, these are the normal neurons. Imagine these are the normal neurons. Okay. Let's see. Let's take the normal neurons. Now, within the neurons, see, I have said you, there is intracellular neurofibrillary tangles look within the cells there are neurofibrillary tangles and outside the neurons there are protein deposition a beta amyloid protein deposition which is called as an uretic plaques uretic plaques are there okay next what else are the important points look see what are the inclusion bodies that are seen very important the inclusion bodies that are seen in alzheimer's disease are called as a hirano bodies so what are these hirano bodies they are nothing but actin Okay, they are nothing but actin. These hirano bodies are seen in hippocampus. After the death, the person is dead. Now, you are doing autopsy. Now, if you look at the hippocampus, now in the hippocampus, the, in the hippocampal neurons, what you can see is the hirano bodies. Okay, hirano bodies are made up of actin. That is seen in Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so grossly what you will see in the Alzheimer's disease, there is a thinning of the gyre and widening of the sulci. Thinning of the gyre and widening of the sulci. So, important points about Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's is number one cause of dementia. What are the gene mutations? ABB gene mutation, presenilin 1, presenilin 2, apolipoprotein E gene mutation. Intracellular accumulations are called as a neurofibrillary tangles, which are nothing but the hyperphosphorylated tau proteins. And extracellular accumulations are nothing but A, a beta amyloid, which is called as a neuritic plaques. Grossly, what you can see? Thinning of the gyri, widening of the sulci. And in the hippocampus, what you can see? Here are no bodies. Here are no bodies. Are seen in hippocampus, are not opposite. Now, image based questions. Look here. So, there is a central core. This is a between the neurons. In between the neurons, what you can see is amyloid. Okay. So, this, these are the neuritic plaques. Okay. These are the neuritic plaques. Okay. These are the neuritic plaques that are seen. Next. See, within these are the dying neurons. Okay. These are the dying neurons. The neurons are dying, sir. So, within the neurons, what you can see is the neurofibrillary tangles. Okay, neurofibrillary tangles, which are nothing but the hyperphosphorylated tau protein. The hyperphosphorylated tau protein is nothing but neurofibrillary tangles. Okay. Next. So, A beta amyloid I have shown you. Neurofibrillary tangles also I have shown you. Okay. Now, 
Now important points, next important points. Sir, Alzheimer's is the number one cause of dementia, right? It's the number one cause of dementia. Okay. Why dementia? Why there is dementia? Look, see this A beta amyloid, uh, the, neuro, uh, the neuritic plaque, it's accumulating, okay, extracellularly it's accumulating. Now, this neurofibril, uh, sorry, not neurofibril, the neuritic plaques, A beta amyloid, it damages this nucleus. Okay, because of this A beta amyloid, this Mayernet nucleus, the Mayernet nucleus is going to be damaged. So, when this Mayernet, Mayernet's nucleus, when it is damaged, there is a decrease in the amount of acetylcholine. Okay, the acetylcholine, Mayernet nucleus consists of a lot of acetylcholine. So, this acetylcholine levels goes down. Okay, the acetylcholine levels goes down. See, acetylcholine is a more, very important neurotransmitter for the memory. It's a very important neurotransmitter for memory. Now, acetylcholine levels are going down. Mayernet's nucleus is damaged. Acetylcholine levels will go down. So, when acetylcholine is going down, the memory formation, the memory circuits, the memory, whatever the memory we have, that's going to be disrupted. Okay. So, important point is which nucleus is damaged, which nucleus is damaged in Alzheimer's disease, what they will ask is Mayernet's nucleus. Which neurotransmitter levels goes down in Alzheimer's disease? Acetylcholine. Which neurotransmitter is responsible for the memory? Acetylcholine. So, how you can treat the Alzheimer's disease? How you can treat the Alzheimer's disease? By increasing the amount of acetylcholine levels. By increasing the amount of acetylcholine levels that you will study in your pharmacology. Okay. So, the drugs which will treat the acetylcholine are going to mainly aim in increasing the acetylcholine levels. Okay. So, done. This is also completed. Now, what else? See, the patients who are having Alzheimer's disease, okay, the patients, sorry, uh, the patients who are having Down syndrome, you know the Down syndrome, right? Trisomy 21. Okay, trisomy 21, X1 extra 21 chromosome. The Down's patients by almost 40 years of age, by almost 40 years of age, every fellow will develop the Alzheimer's disease. Usually normal healthy individuals, Alzheimer's is going to be seen somewhere around 70, 80 when you are getting older. Okay, when you are getting older, memory loss will occur. But it's a old age disease, 70, 80 years. But Down syndrome patients, by 40 years of age, everyone will develop the Alzheimer's disease. Okay, that's the important point. Next. The next neurodegenerative disorder that I'm going to discuss is called as a Parkinsonism. Where the neurons are getting degenerated here, not everywhere. Here, in this condition, Parkinsonism, there is a degeneration of, see, there is a degeneration of dopaminergic neurons. The dopaminergic neurons are going to die. See, look here, this is the midbrain. Okay, this is the cross-section of the midbrain. Here in the cross-section of the midbrain, look, this black color area that I'm highlighting. See, this black color area that I'm highlighting, See, this is called as a substantia nigra. Okay, this is called as substantia nigra. Now, the substantia nigra neurons, they produces dopamine. Okay, they produces dopamine. Substantia nigra neurons produces the dopamine. Now, in this Parkinsonism condition, this dopaminergic neurons are damaged. See, there is loss of that black color. That's also image-based question which was asked. Then the dopaminergic neurons are not there. See, dopamine is very much important for the moments. When you study the basal ganglia topic, okay, in the physiology, there is a topic called as a basal ganglia. Dopamine will stimulate the direct pathway. Dopamine stimulates the direct pathway and helps in initiation of the moments. It helps in initiation of the moments. When the dopaminergic neuron, the source of dopamine, substantia nigra, when these dopaminergic neurons are gone, there is no dopamine release. The direct pathway but the basal ganglia is not stimulated, so no movements, so movements are not going to be there. So, in Parkinsonism, there is a loss of dopaminergic neurons in nigrostriatal pathway, or simply you can say there is a loss of neurons from substantia nigra. Okay, so what happens? The patient cannot be able to initiate the movements. So, the patient is going to have echinacea. I used to remember something like rat, R-A-T, rat. So, there will be rigidity. It's very rigid. The patient is going to be rigid, rigidity. Echinacea, no movements, and tremors. Whenever the patient tries to do the movement, he is going to have the tremors, especially which are called as a pill rolling tremors. They are called as a pill, pill rolling tremors. Okay, pill rolling tremors. So rigidity, echinacea, and tremors are going to be seen. Now, hirano bodies are seen in Alzheimer's disease. Now, in this condition, Parkinsonism, which bodies are seen? Levy bodies are seen. Hirano bodies are made up of actin. This levy bodies are made up of alpha synuclein. So, they are also called as the synucleopathies. Alpha synuclein is forming these Levy bodies. They are seen inside the neurons in Parkinsonism. 
okay there is also a condition called as levy body dementia there are also levy body cells but simply speaking so if you look here this is the normal substantia nigra black color here the substantia nigra is pale gone okay this is the loss of pigmented dopaminergic neurons in the midbrain now after this you know the clinical features tremor rigidity echinacea bradic anasia and the postural instability is going to be there trap the mnemonic is something like a trap okay next so what exactly is this huntington disease okay let me discuss about this huntington disease and friedrich attacks the here itself see huntington disease hunting hunting is a dominant sport it's a dominant sport right which will be like you know usually done by the kings hunting okay so it's a autosomal dominant disorder hunting okay so huntington disease is a autosomal dominant disorder what's the problem here also neurodegeneration but where neurodegeneration so there is a loss of not the dopaminergic neurons but the gabaergic neurons okay there is a loss of one minute guys one minute yogesh me call you son so there is a loss of gaba neurons okay there is a loss of gaba neurons where in the caudate nucleus and the putamen there is a loss of gaba neurons from where from caudate and putamen not from the substantia nigra now which neurons are getting lost the gaba neurons are getting lost from the caudate nucleus as well as putamen see gaba you know everyone knows gaba is a inhibitory neurotransmitter gaba is a inhibitory neurotransmitter it inhibits the movements usually it inhibits the involuntary movements or like involuntary like involuntary movements we don't want involuntary movements right so gaba is there but whenever the gaba is not there there will be excessive movements abnormal movements are going to be there so abnormal movements are called as a chorea 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 is a type of abnormal movements so that's why the total name is huntington's chorea if you look here there is huntington's chorea okay so in huntington's chorea what are the important points which i want you to know it's autosomal dominant inheritance pattern path physiology is loss of gaba neurons from the caudate and putamen why if you ask me why so this huntington disease even i have discussed this in genetics also in genetics also see there is a repetition of this cag see this is a nucleotide cag okay so in the mrna the cag repeats cag 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 continuously repeats repeats abnormally more number of times the cag repeats are going to be present cag repeats again and again again and again the cag cag repeats okay going to come so it's an example of trinucleotide repeat diseases which do not follow mendel's laws of inheritance okay they do not follow mendel's laws of inheritance in genetics also we have discussed so it's a trinucleotide repeat disease what is the trinucleotide repeat that's going to occur again and again the cag cag repeats cag repeats are going to occur now what is friedrich ataxia sir friedrich ataxia friedrich ataxia again uh, the inheritance pattern is autosomal recessive the ataxia right ataxia means which problem gait abnormalities gait gait so g a so gait right so I, it is also a trinucleotide repeat disorder so gait g a i t gait abnormal right so gait g a a g a a gait abnormality g a a so huntington disease is like you know the cag repeats are going to be there in friedrich ataxia it's a g a a this repeats repeats again and again and again and again this repeats are coming so because of this trinucleotide repeats what happens sir because of this trinucleotide repeats what happen is sir uh, the prataxin gene mutation so these patients so here the prataxin gene mutation leads to okay impaired mitochondrial iron homeostasis let me put it in a simple way sir in friedreich ataxia iron is going to start accumulating the mitochondria okay lots and lots of iron will start to accumulate in the mitochondria so mitochondria are going to be damaged the atp generation will be affected especially in the cerebellum so gait abnormality leading to apoptosis of the neurons okay so mitochondria are damaged when the mitochondria are damaged from the mitochondria cytochrome c will be leaked when the cytochrome c is leaking into the cytoplasm that will start the apoptosis so there is apoptosis of the neurons especially in the cerebellum so apoptosis of the neurons in the cerebellum will cause gait abnormalities so friedreich ataxia it's a gait problem what is the trinucleotide repeat gaa autosomal recessive inheritance pattern okay huntington loss of gaba neurons parkinsonism loss of dopaminergic neurons friedreich ataxia loss of or i should say iron accumulation in the mitochondria leading to damage in the neurons in cerebellum leading to gait abnormalities gait abnormalities okay next this amyotopic uh, lateral sclerosis all these topics uh, pics disease these diseases we will discuss in the 
tomorrow's class. So in this today's class, we have seen the basics. Also, we have discussed about the neurodegenerative disorders. Let's continue the other topics in tomorrow's class. Hope the class is helpful. See you tomorrow. Thank you.